This is part 26 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing logout functionality for our ASP.NET Web API service. So here is what we want to do. We want to include this log off button on our data.html page and when we click this log off button, we want to log the user out of the application and redirect him to the login page. To log the user out of the application, all we have to do is remove the access token from the client browser session storage. Remember, the first thing that we are doing when we log in the user is we are storing the access token in the browser session storage. So to log the user out, all we have to do is remove that access token from the browser session storage. So let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that I'm going to do here is increase the access token expiry time. So let's increase this to 10 hours instead of 10 seconds. We have set this to 10 seconds in our previous video for testing purpose. Now let's give our solution a build and navigate to login page. Let's log in with the user that we have already registered. Notice at the moment on our data.html page, we don't have log off button. So let's include the HTML required for the log off button. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So let's make a copy of this load employees button and then change the bits that are required. Let's change the ID of the button to btn log off. And the value on the button is log off. And we want this log off button on the right hand side. So in addition to BTN and BTN success classes, let's also use pull right class. And then now we want to wire up click even handler for the button. So let's use the button ID and within our script section, let's use the jQuery ID selector, find the button and then wire up the click even handler. When we click the button, we want to do two things. First, we want to remove the access token from session storage and then redirect the user to login page. So when we click the button from the session storage, remove the access token. Remember, the key that we have used to store the access token is access token. So using the same key, we are going to remove it from session storage. Once we have removed it from the session storage, we want to redirect the user to the login page. Let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice now we have the log off button. We are still logged in and that's the reason why we get employees when we click load employees button. And now when we click log off, look at that. We are redirected to login.html page. Now, if I try to navigate to data.html, look at that. We are automatically redirected back to login.html. Here is the log of button HTML and the click event handler. At the moment, there are two ways to log the user out of the application. By closing the browser window, since we are storing access token in browser session storage and browser session storage data is lost, when we close the browser window, the user is automatically logged out. Another way to log out the user is by clicking the log off button. When we click the log off button, we are explicitly removing the access token from browser session storage, so the user is logged out. Now, if you do not want to lose the access token when the browser window is closed, then store the access token in browser local storage instead of browser session storage. The difference between local storage and session storage is that the session storage data is lost when the browser window is closed, but whereas the local storage data is not lost when we close the browser window. The way we store retrieve and delete items from local storage is exactly the same as storing, retrieving, deleting items from session storage. The only difference is instead of using session storage object, we will be using local storage object. So let's use local storage now. Notice on our login.html page, we're using session storage object to store the access token. So instead of session storage, let's use local storage. Let's do similar changes on our data.html. So we want to check local storage instead of session storage. We want to remove access token from local storage. And when we click load employees button, we want to read access token from local storage. Let's save all our changes. Reload our login page. Let's log in with the user.
we are logged in. When we click load employees, we get the list of employees. Now let's copy this URL, data.html. Let's close the browser. Since we are storing access token in browser local storage, we should not have lost it. So when we relaunch the browser and when we try to directly go to data.html, we should be allowed. Notice we are still logged in and we can get the list of employees. And now when we click log off button, we are removing the access token from browser local storage. And at this point, if I try to navigate to data.html, look at that, we are automatically redirected to the login page. One obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is, we are only deleting the access token on the client. We are not invalidating or deleting the access token from the server side. If someone can intercept the access token, will they not be able to use that access token and gain access to the system? The straight answer to the question is yes. If someone is able to intercept the access token, they will be able to impersonate and gain access to the system. However, most of the systems that use access tokens work over SSL, secure socket layer, which inhibits intercepting access tokens. Another question that we may get at this point is, should we really invalidate or delete access tokens from the server? No, there is no need to invalidate or delete access tokens from the server. Access token lives on the client and it is enough if we remove it from the client. Another good practice is to set the expiry of the access token to as short time as practically possible depending on the nature of your application. Thank you for listening and have a great day.